review team to do so, just visit gnb.ca slash vibrantnb or email the brief to vibrantnbdynamic at gnb.ca. We have a good sized group here this evening, so I'm going to ask you to use the raise your hand feature if you wish to make a comment or ask a question. This way, everything will move along smoothly. You'll find the raise hand function either through the participants panel or under reactions in the bottom menu bar. You can also post, post rather your questions or comments using the chat function. This public engagement is the third one. We're doing four meetings like this this week. We've already completed six themes for stakeholder sessions that brought together many individuals and organizations around the table. Once new municipal governments are sworn in, we will be conducting 12 regional engagement sessions for a total of 22 sessions at this stage. We have two hours this, this evening. So I'm going to ask everyone to be brief and to try and limit your comments to two minutes or less allowing as many people as possible to express their viewpoints. If you have a lot of things to say, we encourage you to send written submissions to the local governance review team, as I already said, to ensure that we have an open, engaging discussion. We have adopted some rules for respectful dialogue that we want to ensure everyone is aware of. All individuals participating in these engagement sessions on local government reform must abide by the rule, rules for respectful dialogue noted below. Failure to do so may result in participants being asked to leave the session. First of all, all participants agree to open dialogue without profanity, verbal abuse, nor bullying. Secondly, all participants agree to express their thoughts within the time allotted to allow everyone an opportunity to participate. Thirdly, all participants agree to follow instructions from the facilitator. Fourthly, all participants agree to reach to treat all opinions and ideas with mutual respect and consideration. And finally, all participants agree to have respect for everyone during the session. Now that we've dealt with all these housekeeping issues, We'd like to get things started. First of all, I would invite the Honorable Daniel Alain, Minister of Local Government and Local Governance Reform to the screen for a few remarks. Mr. Minister, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Emilius, and good evening, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here with you tonight. This is our third public session this week. We've had excellent deliberations up to now. This evening, we'll focus on regional cooperation and land use planning. I expect that these two topics will bring about excellent ideas, debates, and contributions from all of you. Even though it's nice out, we've had good participation tomorrow night in English. Also, we'll deal on regional collaboration and land use planning. Between now and the end of June, we'll have had 22 sessions. And as many of you know, I've done over a hundred meetings with stakeholders around the province. This will continue because this conversation is most important. Getting people involved is so important in this process. It's essential that all of us New Brunswickers have a chance to talk about opportunities presented in the green paper and to help us better understand what is important to you. The green paper is not government policy. No decisions have been made up to now. The province needs regions, communities that are viable and resilient financially, offering quality services to grow. Together, we can make sure that we bring the necessary changes to have dynamic and viable communities to improve our quality of life. I hope 
that we'll have frank discussions and open discussions this evening. And I thank you once again for being with us tonight. I'd like also to, to welcome my fellow MLAs, the member Daniel Guitar is with us, the member Gilles Lepage and MLA Keith Chasson are with us tonight. So there we have it. And now here's my deputy minister from local government and local government reform, Ryan Donahue, the floor is yours. So thank you very much, Mr. Minister. Good evening, everyone. I thank you for joining us this evening for our third public session. First of all, quickly, I'll give you a bit more information on how the reform process will focus. On the screen, you'll see a deadline. It's an overview. We've posted this information in a more detailed, and we have a more detailed the timeline on our website. We started this process, this reform process last fall. Also, we launched our website in January and in April, the second phase started through the green book and will end at the end of June when we'll have done our 22 public sessions with stakeholders. The third phase will focus on analyzing all the information that we collected throughout this engagement pro pro session, like tonight's session. In the fall, we'll, we'll share a white paper which will deal with the government policy when it comes to reform. I'll repeat what the minister just said earlier, meaning no decisions have yet to have been made. And the white book has yet to be drafted. So the green book, we have opportunities and ideas to bring about deliberations. It's not government policy. We'll do this in the fall. As I've mentioned, we've published the green book in April. I hope you've had the opportunity to read it. Otherwise, certainly you can consult it on our website. The green book explains the issues that must be tackled within this reform process and offers possibilities to remedy these issues and encourages public debate. Much like the discussions we'll have this evening, the Green Book has four pillars. First of all, structure of local governance in Brunswick, regional collaboration, we'll talk about this tonight, land use planning, again, that's a theme for tonight and funding this whole system. So tonight we'll tackle regional collaboration and land use planning, these two pillars. If you have other solutions then, that are not part of the green book, certainly we can talk about those tonight or send us an email. This is not an exhaustive list, these four pillars and we want to gather your comments and know your ideas. Before I let Maurice speak, I'd like to remind all of you the provincial government's responsibilities and those of local governments when it comes to services. The list you see on your screen, certainly it's not an exhaustive list, and some local governments provide up to 23 services to their communities. By the way, in LSDs, the minister is responsible to make sure that residents receive services like uh, fire protection, police services, and garbage collection and recycling. So thank you very much for being with us tonight. We can't wait to have our discussions. And Maurice, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Minister. And Thank you, Mr. Minister. I can't wait to see what New Brunswickers have to say about the local governance reform. So now let's go move to our discussions tonight. We'll focus on two of the four pillars in the green book, local collaboration and land use planning. We'll give you four questions. As I've mentioned at the beginning of the session, we want as many people as possible to have an opportunity to share their comments when it comes to those issues. So I'll we'll ask you therefore to stay within two minutes. We have 
a timer on the screen. That'll help you not go over that timeline. If there's a little bit of time at the end of each section, we'll go back to the people who have other comments. And let's remember, we have two hours for all of this. So we'll move to the first question. For many years now, businesses and economic groups have been saying that local governments and regions must further cooperate. The Green Book outlines a few options, and I'll say, I'll mention three. Having communities pooled their human and financial resources to reduce duplication, strengthen the mandate of regional service commissions, and thirdly, developing service standards and benchmarks and ways to measure them that both make sense locally and fair, no matter where you are within the province. Which of these opportunities are the most important to pursue? Which are most relevant to you? Are there other options that we could also take into consideration? Now, the floor is yours, and we welcome your comments and observations. So who would like to start our deliberations this evening? I'm waiting for someone to raise his or her hand. So anybody? Philomen, I see a hand going up. Philomen? Microphone? Your microphone is off. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead. You've mentioned some options, but as you know, municipalities and local communities play an important role for all residents. I'm an immigrant and I am black in New Brunswick. There's at least 7,000 people who stated that they are black. So we would ask that reinforce capacity, enhance capacity in municipalities to fight racial discrimination so that we can live in community. And that's what I want to share. Well, thank you for your comments. Most appropriate, thank you. Any other comments? Yes, Jill Breyer, please go ahead. Yes, good evening. It's when it comes to collaboration and cooperation, sharing costs when it comes to recreational or cultural services. And also at the community level, I think regionally, there are new entities that would be created. I think it'd be important regionally that we have an agreement as there, that there's consensus, a type of organization that could take place uh, like in the Kidin Peninsula with the volunteer center, which coordinates many community efforts. So, you know, if we can coordinate this and put recreational services as essential services, that would be a step in the right direction, compelling municipalities to come together and agree on operational issues and make the maintenance of those facilities. All right, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Brunner. Good points. Are there any further comments? Yes, Gilles Lebossi. Yes, like Mr. Breyer, when it comes to recreation and facilities, we have to include the whole industry, the whole recreational industry uh, and walking our, our VTT trails and uh, snowmobile trails. Right now, they're mostly organized by volunteers, especially in LSDs. And these volunteers, not only do they participate, but grant uh, access rights. So with this reform, we're wondering if we won't grant these owners for their cooperation. Often they won't use that part of their land to facilitate, well, that very important industry and us and LSDs, we don't have economic spin-offs for these types of recreational activities. The economic spin-offs, selling gas vehicles, selling vehicles, 
anything linked to restaurants, hotels, anything that has anything to do with tourism, we have no revenues, only expenses. So yes, we'd have to include that part and to have a fair regional cooperation. And how do you think we could include that so that the spinoffs go back to municipalities, Mr. Bussey? Well, the spinoffs automatically go back to municipalities, the sales of snowmobiles and ATVs. All the dealers are within municipalities, gas sales. They're still in municipalities, hotels, restaurants. Again, all these spinoffs go back to municipalities. So in LSDs right now, there's only the expenses and there's no operational budgets either. If there's an event with 500 snowmobilers in the region, can you imagine the economic spin-offs for the whole region? It's important. And right now, people in LSDs, well, they see this, but there's no organization at the regional level to maximize that industry. It's left, well, to who, who wants to to do so, but there's no organization to organize this industry. Well, thank you, Mr. Bassey. Now, Serge Larochelle, the floor is yours. Yeah, good evening, Serge Larochelle from Macacang. Just like in the, in the opportunities outdoors for tourism, both provincially and from outside the, the province. I'm thinking about walking trails and bike trails. There's an initiative from uh, Healthy and be that needs uh, some help. And the idea of uh, networking about and do some rest working for our walking trails and to preserve the environment. So we need an inter regional mechanism that would continue to bring about cooperations between LSDs and rural communities. So we're talking about planning at a regional level, which would protect these natural spaces for our tourists and our residents and for the environment. All right. Thank you, Mr. Rochelle. Now, Marie Larivière, Marie? Yes, good evening. Thank you. Just to add what Gilles Basset mentioned, in LSDs, in ours anyways, we have a budget for tourism, for a staff and a tourist office, anything that's related to tourism, but I don't think they're economic spin-offs for our LSDs. So again, the residents of LSDs pay for those services, but there's no there's no spin-off, just to add to what Gilles was saying. All right, well, thank you, Marie. Now, José Rioux. José? Would you turn on your microphone, please? José? Oh, I'm sorry. José Rioux Walker from Drummond. And good evening, good evening. I wanted to add, I think it would be good not to have a model <laughs> necessarily so throughout the province. Let me explain. We have many cooperation projects, projects that exist and work really well, but good cooperation with very little funding at various levels, like us in Northwestern and me, there's some cooperation that takes place just with the neighboring communities, and also Saint André, Saint Leonard, and other cooperation programs that we have with the, the region served by the Regional Service Commission. There's important projects that require, let's say, people that are trained, people who can deal with big issues, big files like infrastructure projects, transportation issues that we want to set up, infra housing, if you were part of those information sessions on immigration, housing is a most important factor. If we want to grow our regions, we have to focus more and more on immigration. 
And what I mean is that for us here in Northwestern New Brunswick, it's most important. And perhaps for the Acadian Peninsula also, perhaps they already have some services like those, but we could have better cooperation, which would vary from region to region. So like in English, they say, no cookie cutter approach. I think it'll be difficult to find a formula that will meet everyone's needs. But I want to add, because many people talk about around the table, they come from LSDs. When we have important projects in our region, tourism projects or projects dealing with recreational activities or facilities, projects in our immigration service center, people around the table who participate financially are municipalities. There are no monies coming from LSDs because of the funding formula they have. It's not, be, that's, it's not because they don't want to, it's they just can't afford to do so. Nonetheless, these are people that can benefit from these services. And we know we've heard all the stories, you know, over the years about this. So in closing, the, the formula must be supple, flexible. We, may, we must have funding behind this that's uh, adequate for worthwhile projects, right? Maybe in our region, it's economic development. We want to receive some funding for that. Maybe for another region, it's community infrastructure. That's a priority. So I don't think we have to have a formula that's a magical one that'll work everywhere. It depends on the needs, the local needs and community needs. And according to possible cooperation that exists. I don't know if I answered your question, but yeah, you raise excellent points. Thank you very much. Now, Jules Ashe, please, Jules, Mr. Ashe. All right, good evening, thank you. Is your microphone on? All right, we can hear you, thank you. When we talk about cooperation, I see three levels of cooperation. If we take a region which we define by uh, the territory covered by a regional service commission, we can have cooperation on a regional level. I'm in the Acadian Peninsula, so we're talking about issues dealing for the, the Acadian Peninsula. We already have some cooperation taking place. And we have to see that in the Acadian Peninsula, we could divide this in five or six subregions, right? The Finn report, for instance, deals with 14 municipalities, 32 LSDs, and in fact, six municipalities. So if we had six stakeholders around a table for the whole territory with uh, decision-making powers, cooperation on issues dealing with the whole peninsula, recreational issues, tour tourism issues, it becomes just easier to come to an agreement. When there are many entities, it becomes very difficult at one point, you know, to be able to communicate with one another. At the sub-regional sub -regional level, if I take the, the greater Calicut region, they certainly have projects that are more propitious to them than in Miscou or Spega. We could work on things that are closer to our region. And also, this cooperation that's possible locally. Right now, we're talking about sharing servants fees for certain services, people, you know, for recreational or sports facilities, but we forget to talk about libraries. Libraries, that's an essential service also for education, for culture. And we don't talk about this very much. So locally, it's one of the services that should be part of cultural activities and sport, sporting facilities. We need cooperation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Ashley. Now, Eric Marquis, Mr. Marquis. Yes, good evening, Eric Marquis from Edmonston. Yeah, good evening, good evening. So the word cooperation should be at the center 
of the changes that we want to bring. We can't work in a vacuum and silos. We can't work like separate communities. We lose our purchasing power by doing so. And as to me, I see this, I see opportunities that For me, cooperation, I see it financially with purchasing power. I also see it when it comes to the whole issue of human resources. And we know we have a lot of communities, a lot of entities where we have some special specialty. I'll take the whole issue, the issue of water and sewers. I know people who work in this, they have knowledge. They have in a small community, a small village, can't necessarily afford someone full-time person to take care of this while in the community, we could share those types of services. It'd be just, it would be easier and easier to manage within, a, within our villages and cities. So for me, cooperation is at the very center of the next reform. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Maki. Now, Gaeta Thomas and then Michel Soussi. Mr. Thomas, please. Good evening. Gita from the Economic Council. My point, like Mr. Ashi, regional cooperation is most important for various aspects. One of the most important ones is economic development at a regional level. Without the cooperation of 27, 28 municipalities, like let's say in the Acadian Peninsula, it's difficult to have community projects at a regional level level tourism mr ashley talked about this but i'd like to focus on infrastructure to attract companies people who come and settle in our regions in our beautiful regions without regional cooperation uh, and without structure so i agree that there are too many entities 340 entities is just too many and it's difficult to reach a consensus. So as Mr. Ashe says, if we have groups of seven or eight people representing a region, we'll have more in-depth deliberations and we'll be able to talk about regional development, economic development, and also have economic development officers that each small community can't afford. All right, thank you, Geta Michel to see the floor. Sorry. Yeah, good evening, Maurice. Thank you for letting me speak tonight. You know. A bit like uh, Mr. Ashi, I think the point that we have to keep in mind, take Estigush as an example. When we say each community must participate and cooperate to offer important services, I'll take the Shallow Airport. That airport in Shallow, all municipalities, including LSDs, have accepted to share and pay part of, well, it's uh, one cent per hundred dollar of assessment to make sure that they have this essential services for our region. And the airport services is not just for Shadow's economy or Dallas, Atelville, Campbellton, but also for LSDs because we know the those who are outside municipalities, you know, they take advantage of, they, they, profit, they benefit from those services and ambulance services also that use the airport. So it's an example whereby if we could have cooperation, we do. And, you know, economic development, you know, it's not just for municipalities and cities and villages, it's for all regions, because if you can have more residents, uh, you know, everywhere throughout the province in New Brunswick, this adds to your tax base, allowing you to grow and to work to offer more services to your population in all the regions of the province. So we shouldn't just look at uh, the money going into a municipality, but we have to look at the money that's going within a region and that allow that region to grow together in the region. That's what economic development is. LSDs, villages, cities. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Susi. We'll now move to Jean-Guy Levesque. Monsieur Levesque. Yes, good uh, evening. Yes, good evening. Listen, I'd like to go right ahead. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you well. Yes, go ahead. I'd simply like to support what Mayor 
Frem Winston, Mr. Matki, we're talking about the importance of co cooperation. I believe that somewhere we agree, and nobody tonight is going to deny this, that it is basic for the next reform. Now, not only at that level, well, of course, we're talking about the sharing of services. I heard Mr. Bryan talking a while ago of uh, leisure and uh, recreation. So how do we cooperate it? How do we start it? How do we put it together? What conditions, what winning conditions do we have to do so? Because we have to note that we have some cooperation and many people testified this evening in Edmonton in the southern the peninsula, but there is but there are obstacles and what i would like to say and that's my message for tonight this evening is cooperation is going to see the light of day when we'll take an approach a win-win approach and in that sense whether you're an lsd whether a municipality whether it's your town or city if we have the impression that co collaboration is to come help one entity, only one community, in almost a repetitive way. And that's where, in my sense, we see the reactions that get installed. Not to say we agree, but somewhere, we have to know that our community, our region, our municipality uh, come out a winner as well. And for me, I believe that it is a certain thing that if we want to go there, the government could impose with uh, some forms, some formulas that were used uh, asked by the government. And for example, in St. John, but I believe the important part is to start dialogue and to go more in depth. And once again, I conclude on that, if communities put themselves in a win-win situation, which I, I talked about the uh, okay, so it's the same thing in the rest of course, each community must uh, win, must be a winner. Once, it might be one winner in one day and another winner it's the next day, it, not necessarily the same municipality or the same community that uh, come out a winner, comes out a winner. So once again, of course, uh, I mentioned the issue of sharing of services uh, financially and how, but once again, if we do not find a formula, because uh, I work with uh, Mayor Susi in the Athelville region, and we succeeded in having agreements, interesting agreements. But once again, if we want to go further, it's going to have to be a win-win situation. Okay, Monsieur Levesque, merci. Monsieur Levesque, thank you. I see that we have three people waiting now, Monsieur Petit, Monsieur Maillet, and Breyer. So if we can do it quickly. After these three, we'll proceed to the next question. So we're going to start with Mario Pelsier. And like I said, if we can do it fairly quickly for the time being, you'll have the opportunity to, to speak because we're here till 8.30. In any case, go ahead, Mr. Pelsier. Good evening, good evening, everyone. Thank you, Mr. Michel, Mario Pelsier, Division of Review Dundee. I agree because I heard not to repeat what was said, but in this Tegosh, there are four villages with the first uh, nation reward projects that have started. We're talking about uh, recreation and trails, we used to see around the airport as well. And cooperation is very important. One to go get as well, the entire issue of culture, language, and the community of interest is very important, a process and a reform. So for me, that's primary. And for us in 2015, we amalgamated with four LSDs in the village of Real River Crossing at the time. But I believe it's important to make sure of the component of the LSDs at the end of the day, but we really need open communication. You have to decide to have cooperation together to invite the key players. So that means if we're talking about recreation and municipalities and well, we have to go beyond that. We have to go get our LSDs to in order to participate with them, consult with them, and make sure they have the buy-in of the LSDs. It's good that towns and villages, we neglected for many years the LSDs. Why LSDs are asking a lot of questions about reform. Well, for me, it's quite evident that they are part of the solution as opposed to the reform, compared to the reform that's coming. And they're good examples throughout New Brunswick. 
and you have to network as well because we not we don't have to reinvent the wheel. We don't have to invent the reinvent the rules. Sometimes they're the wheel that is. Sometimes there are good platforms happening in New Brunswick. Nice networking that could be done through different associations. And on that, I'd simply like to thank you very much. So, Mr. Pedje, uh, thank you very much. Maria Maya, please, Mr. Maya. Yes, good evening. I'd like to raise a few points, a few issues. I went to LSD from St. Marie Kent. I would wish the government to be open, not only to one model, but to have a few models to better fulfill the needs and in our situation, our own situation throughout the province. If we try to have something that is their uniform cookie approach throughout throughout the province, I'm afraid that we're not going to succeed in getting the full potential and give the services to our population as best as possible. And that comment was made by others as well. And I strongly believe in it. As for cooperation, I believe it is certainly one of the main pillars for reform that should be in the reform and to be put in the green paper. So I believe that's the way we can develop and to fulfill the needs of our citizens and by making sure that we cooperate as much as possible between our communities. So can our, our uh, CSR is very open to many initiatives, very open, whether it's for immigration, for economic development and with services. It is done as a group, but through the CSR, but some between municipalities as well, with RSCs, whether it's to travel about the uh, specialized uh, workforce. I believe that we've shown it in a very efficient way and cooperation, regional for regional cooperation. And we need to continue to do that. And we have to look at other possibilities. Okay, in our situation, just one last comment because there was a comment that was made that LSDs do not contribute financially to many of these initiatives. I would say that in Kent, that by working together, LSDs and the municipalities contribute financially to many of these initiatives. It don't fire. That's it, Mr. Breyer. Thank you, Mr. Breyer. Thank you for giving me a second chance at it. You mentioned in your question about the RSCs and the data that is necessary for cooperation, but I pointed out an initiative that uh, Ayrton Culture and Sports and Recreation had put a program in place uh, with uh, for almost all RSCs got committed in the studies. And what Mr. Ashi, the mayor from Lamech was mentioning a while ago, the sub-regions were the line. So we already have a database with cooperation. It was always central. And with the recreation, these are models that could be applied in many other sectors, among others, the community aspect, which should encompass all the trails and really a need for each of the regions to better structure themselves. And it could be done through regional service commissions, through RSCs, or through a regional municipality that would have a governance. This is like a master in Quebec, et cetera. Just to say that the data exists, and I believe we have the necessary vehicles to be put in place to increase that cooperation. Okay, thank you, Mr. Breyer. We will now proceed to question number two. Another possibility proposed by the Green Paper is the better coordination between the regional management plans and all future management to allow others to slightly go on urban sprawl and rural uh, zoning to manage industrial management and to protect natural resources to, for agricultural uh, businesses. So how can local governments 
could accordingly manage these types of uh, issues. I now invite you to offer your comments. Would anybody like to offer comments on that? Oui, Monsieur Bosset, allez-y. Monsieur Bosset, great in. Yes. Well, uh, management. There are regulations that happened for many years in New Brunswick over the past 20 years, among others, for the protection of uh, uh, water, drink, potable water. It's very good. It's excellent, drinkable water, except that when you protect some pieces of land on each side of uh, waterways uh, above the of, uh, municipalities, uh, there are owners that have to sacrifice part of their income with the reform, could the reform see so that we pay these owners in one way or another. So another issue is when you talk about uh, protecting nature, we know that the owners, when they have cuts, it's not, it's, it's selective cutting, they're not uh, clear cutting and fairly often they have multiple resources for revenues, among others. Uh, macro uh, businesses, uh, and for close to 20 years now, micro sawmills, and before it, the mill should be put for control, quality controls, but it's different to understand. Right at the present time, we find probably third quality wood in New Brunswick, and the quality one and two is reserved for exp exports. And it complicates the life of the owners because they have to, it causes them more administration and it limits their market as well. So there might be a place to get organized to remove that regulation because we're regulation over regulation. And when a person builds a house, he wants the best quality wood, and he, he uh, organizes with the builder that defends, defends his reputation and to build something that is of quality. Moreover, at each step of, each step of construction, there are assessments by inspectors. So quality control, there's more than enough. So yes. <clears throat> And the price of uh, lumber has increases, so we have uh, less market for LSDs. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Basset. We really appreciate your comment. Now move on to Andre Frenet, Mr. Frenet. Yes, good evening. Good evening. I believe with the question was uh, tied to uh, urban sprawl and development outside the limits of a municipality. So from my point of view, it's sure that what the government could do is to study the issue. If, is it sustainable development or not? So sustainable development, is it economically, does it pay to develop and open new uh, areas? So if we have a life circle analysis, is it yes, if we develop outside the limits of municipalities, are we paying the real costs? I believe that's where the issue is. And it's what we must uh, sustain uh, development outside municipalities. It's not sustainable development. And we have many examples and similar examples when we talk to a school that is built outside the limits of a municipality. But of course, after that, you have to bring infrastructures, uh, water and sewer for new roads. It costs uh, very much to taxpayers of the entire province, not only from the region. And I believe a lot in the theme, so user pay services. So there are many people that say, well, it's not a secret for some people, but I live in an LSD and I know what I'm talking about, but if as a user of a municipal infrastructure, I should pay the real cost, I should pay probably a premium because in municipalities you have people who are paying taxes and are gonna use, let's say a pool, municipal pool, but my children who go to municipal pool, I expect that I should pay costs, a bit higher costs. 
precisely to help to fund these uh, installations. And in municipalities, if you look in the Southeast, where municipalities per se sees a lot of residential development outside of municipalities, I believe that at one time or another, we have to see if there really uh, should question ourselves as to why people go there. Some is for uh, reasons that they want to benefit from a certain quality of life and others to uh, save on taxes. So like I was saying, if we work to, we have to pay the real cost of what it costs for urban sprawl. I believe that we could eliminate a bit of that. So. I think so a sort of moratorium until the new development, uh, until the province decides really what they want to do with the green paper, is it to put a moratorium at all levels for zoning, because I've seen it in the past when they hit the policy for the shore, it stimulated development. Uh, I'm sure thank you very much, Monsieur Frenet. We'll have to move on to others uh, who have their raised hand. Thank you for your comments, however. Michel de Soucy, you have the floor. Michel, I thank you. Listen, I find that it's very important uh, in the province that we have in place a system where there's a good qualifications in land management. And we've lived in the past, past few years, like you know, in some regions where people, they position themselves in situations that are not very pleasant. So if we have good planning with the land management in all regions, we, we know what to expect. I talked about the uh, wind, wind, wind farms and, and uh, all of that. But if we don't put in place a system where regions, there should be really management, land management for the long term is going to allow us to advance. I live in a municipality in a region which we designate residential, but I cannot have a pork production company next to me. I don't want a garage next to me because they decided to go in that region that is residential. So if we don't have in place that type of process, is we're creating situations where people are becoming bothered and frustrated and the con region for LSD, yes, to build a house in a field that is on land that belongs to you, except that if the neighbor decides to build something and there's nothing to preventing from doing so, we do not have a, a good reason to prevent him from do, doing so, but sadly enough, we see today people who are said that uh, the neighbor opened a garage and their, et cetera. So I believe before RSCs were in place, we talked about to giving that mandate to the RCs for land management in each sector, but sadly enough, that was removed. In any case, I believe it is important that it be put in place and that it be throughout the province of New Brunswick. Oh, well, thank you very much, Michelle. Ask any other comments on that? Many or any others, uh, some others who have not made comments before I see that. Serge La Rochelle said, Serge La Rochelle, be there. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Well, there was talk about the importance of keeping uh, areas for water, drinking water, possibly to maintain uh, areas around the streams, etc., for potable water, that it be for private properties in non incorporated. 60% of the wells are on the private property. That is, the owners are responsible for the quality of their water. So to make sure that there are uh, zones uh, for it's very interesting. But there's a question of uh, better assessing you know, the value of natural zones and ecosystem that a forest that is mature ecologically and between to, or for water retention, etc., for quality of water, precisely, to prevent against uh, uh, flooding. So better assessment of these areas in sustainable development. 
sustainable development uh, and in society and uh, environment to recognize the importance of these natural areas it's going to be easier for citizens i agree like Ms. Sibasi mentioned that a type of reimbursement or payment for people who uh, maintain natural areas natural zones and not develop that is and becomes a very important mechanism so there's more and more research and our policies allow us to better know what these values are as much as natural areas as well as ecosystems that these places offer okay thank you thank you Monsieur La Rochelle. we now move on to eric marquis followed by maurice maya great eric thank you very much for the question of land management it must be essential for the question of uh, lsds as well in all the regions that are not incorporated it was a problem at the present time for a city like ours for a town like ours over the past two or three years we two serious problems one what was is a clear cutting clear cutting and that has catastrophic effects on uh, waterways a river that we have uh, here with uh, silting in the rivers so that the water raises and we had to deal with a uh, flooding in uh, houses and basement houses so we had to put install pumping situations to avoid that type of problem so i believe that the part that is stronger at the present time and this is where it's important is the fact that we might be a bit more simpler to develop when we go in lsds and an intervention that we have the city of edmonton is if in the lsds uh, to what itself with next to waterway there could be catastrophic effects uh, for used tires he was using used tires not only for lsds but as well on the part from the saint basil region so we had no choice we had to intervene and there were no other uh, person who could intervene in that file so naturally there is a role that has to be taken either by the rscs or another level and to determine how it's going to be done but it has to be done otherwise we'll find ourselves with serious problems over the next few years thank you I right, thank you, Mr. Marquis. Now I move to Maurice Maya, Mr. Maya. Yes, about the land planning, I believe, is we're not doing there are too many loopholes, and there's a lack uh, of uniformity, mainly in certain LSDs that do not have any uh, planning office to use development and what we want as development and what we do not want as development but i'd like to bring the attention to the possibility d in the green paper that says that to define provincial orientation on precise land management by using statements of interest on a provincial scale so i find that very interesting I'm not 100% convinced that I caught of the definition of that, but I believe that I understood a good part of it. But I'd like to bring the example of agriculture. I have a bias in that field, but I like the opening that there be, in fact, like agriculture, because agriculture, like I was telling a former governor general a few years ago, about 10 years ago that agriculture is done in the in rural areas not in towns so we have to make sure that we have the best land possible reserved and conserved for agriculture so that we be competitive with whatever we're comp competing with and to have a provincial statement see so with the pandemic we're going through at the present time we see the importance to have the opportunity to purchase locally and not be dependent on other people from outside the province if we had declarations that we want to increase self-sufficiency or increase production agricultural production in the province that through such a statement that there are tools throughout the province 
in order to make sure that development and soil conservation and land be done in an efficient way. So that's what I wanted to raise because I find that very important. Okay, well, thank you, Monsieur Mayer. We now move on to Adrien Prado. Monsieur Prado, please. Yes, good evening. I'm really happy to hear people talk about conservation in the last few comments. And in fact, if we look at uh, other jurisdictions like Quebec or Ontario, they have organizations that take care of uh, water basins and are funded by the province and take care of natural areas and to manage waterways and the quality of water and environment as well. So sadly enough in New Brunswick, we don't really have that type of structure and organizations are fairly uh, volunteer, uh, non-profit organizations that must apply to the environment just for that. And to talk about uh, planning, land planning without considering really natural areas and the ecosystems as well, it is uh, impossible that with what we're playing with New Brunswick at times with us, either too much water, not enough water. So not to have that information, not to have the capacity at the scale of uh, planning scale that should be regional or municipal. And the many small municipalities or in LSDs, the capacity simply does not exist. So it really is, uh, we're talking about I wanted to come back to the first question, talking about cooperation, collaboration, that is essential to consider really the aspect of the environmental aspect and hydrology as well in that cooperation as being an essential service as well for land management, or but for any municipal development as well. So that's it. Well, thank you, Adrien. Thank you very much. We now move to Catherine Dufour, followed by Gilles Breyer. Catherine, please go right ahead. Yes, your mic, please. Uh, sorry. Yes, thank you. Uh, good evening, everyone. Just to answer what Mr. Prado just mentioned, and we've seen it in examples a while ago, that land management and good planning, sustainable development uh, often goes beyond the limits. Uh, we've seen it with Mr. Marquis as well, when he was talking about the land is planned in function of the resources. It's not always limited on uh, municipal limits. That's my first comment. And secondly, if you want to have planning in New Brunswick, no matter what scale, at what scale, whether it's locally or regionally, it is important for us to have targets to be reached as a province as well. So whether there be a targets or perspectives of interest, provincial interests, so about agriculture, about environment, as well as urban sprawl or no matter the field is to have targets and objectives to meet. So that as a planner for a region and a territory that we have targets to reach on a provincial scale, and we can bring back to our scale uh, provincially to have targets or objectives as a province, we see ourselves in sustainable development of our territory and resources for the future in order to be able to get uh, to move to actions at locally as well as regional, if we want to find a solution. So that was my comment. Thank you very much, uh, Catherine. And now Jill Breyer. Mr. Breyer, yes, so thank you. Good evening, everyone, once again. About uh, regional management, we note that SRCs have an important role to play at the present time. They must develop and must put in place management plans for the LSD territory. So there are some difficulties in meeting that mandate, but it is done gradually and with a municipal entity, regional municipal entity, management would become very important and it would be better structured, better organized. A point that I'd like to raise, which is tied to the point that I made a preceding lead that was mentioned was the entire issue of the trails and outdoor activities. That is tied as well to all the issue of the environment. And we see more and more uh, with the pandemics, we see the importance of uh, outdoor activities. We see to develop trails as well. We see the indicating peninsula, the Velo uh, bicycle line that was done, bicycle trail, everybody, everybody participated, but it's part of management. It would be nice that 
at the level of uh, the lady a while ago, Madam Jafu was mentioning to have targets and objectives to be nice provincially and regionally as well, that, that there be targets uh, and objectives so we could develop uh, a network of uh, uh, bicycle trails in New Brunswick will have centers of outdoor activities that were supported. So, so it should be part and it should in the reform, the I see that the regional government, regional government, or the form of regional governance uh, could take in hand some files like that that are important. Thomas, qui a posté euh, par écrit un commentaire. Je lui demanderai de peut-être élaborer verbalement pour nous. Gaëtan, pourriez-vous prendre la parole, s'il vous plaît? Oui. Alors, un, un des, des issues qu'on fait face au Conseil économique euh, avec beaucoup d'entreprises, puis on a beaucoup dans les, dans les districts de services locaux et aussi dans les, euh, dans les municipalités, ils nous disent qu'il y a un grand besoin de main dœuvre alors, au Conseil économique, on va travailler avec le gouvernement et avec le Business Council, le, le, le groupe anglophone. On va parler euh, comment on va accomplir 60 000 immigrants euh, d'ici à 2026. Ça, c'est euh, en ligne avec la stratégie que M. Higgs a annoncée euh, dans son état de la province. Alors, il va ceux qui vont pouvoir bénéficier de ça, c'est ceux qui vont pouvoir travailler ensemble pour vraiment accueillir, accommoder tout ce beau monde-là qui va nous venir de partout dans le monde. Et, et quand on parle de, de zonage, quand on parle d'allocation de, de terrain, euh, on parle de bâtiments, on, on est à Dieppe, par exemple, chez la PSC, puis il y a des gens qui ne veulent pas que ça aide plus que six étages. Il va falloir trouver des solutions euh, partout au Nouveau-Brunswick pour accueillir ce monde-là de façon à ce qu'on peut continuer à, à avoir les revenus nécessaires. Et on parle de 271 millions par année en revenus additionnels pour les municipalités, pour les, euh, toutes les régions de la province, et les, les districts de services locaux euh, ou, ou la province, pour vraiment nous donner des bénéfices. Et quand on parlait de développement économique, tantôt, c'est justement ça. Sans la force de travail pour combler nos besoins dans le futur, on ne peut pas arriver, même que nos, infra, nos infrastructures sont à risque. Alors, c'est pour ça qu'il faut qu'on s'organise. Nos infrastructures sont à risque, donc c'est pourquoi nous devons travailler. So together, we'll make it. So thank you. Thank you very much, Geta. So now we'll go to the third question. Third question. To, there's always demand to fund more infrastructure and not just at a local level. When we're talking about recreational services, there are a lot of resources, facilities, and activities that span borders and that more than one community could use. Sometimes communities have pushed for things like new ranks because their neighboring community got one. We have seen we have seen some communities come up with regional master plans for shared recreation infrastructure, but they all they don't all use this approach. Here's a third question. How could we better how could we be better rather at intercommunity and regional collaboration? Could we use regional service commissions to strengthen collaboration in the region. So that's the third question. And I wonder what you think. Who would like to speak first, please? Yes, Mr. Soucy. Michel? Yes, uh, good evening. I'll speak first. I'd like to go back on what our elected mayor, Jean Guinevec, said earlier, I think when we talk about infrastructure and sharing services, we can talk about services, recreational services. We sh if we should be talking about neighboring communities and see how we can deal with these requests because sometimes we live on, a, we have vast territories. There's nothing wrong having various municipalities within this territory, but it should go through dialogue and discussions that we could have with neighboring communities. 
Yes. All right. Well, thank you, Michel. Any further comments? Observations? Excuse me? Yes, Mr. Ashley, go ahead. Mr. Ashley, your microphone, please. Okay. All right. That's great. Thank you. Talking about cooperation here, I'd like to go back to what I raised earlier when it comes to various levels of cooperation, because I think we make all we have to make a difference for the main region, sub regions and entities. And we talked about earlier sharing revenues from tourism, for instance. Revenues went into municipalities. It depends on the region. In some region, it goes to municipalities and other regions. It goes greatly to LSDs because they have recre recreational facilities there or cultural ones. We talked about win-win agreements. At this point, I'd like to say this. Municipalities were created through initiatives from people who lived in these communities in the 1960s. So that's why it developed at that time, we could live in, in a small entity. Now services grew, businesses grew, etc. So now the reality is very different. We have to see, to dream bigger when we think about a region, a municipality, because we can't live in isolation as we lived in the past. So if we want to reform a municipality with a bigger territory then the council the new council bringing all these people together from these communities they'll have to think about everyone so everyone will be part of the same municipality so it's not saying oh it'll be those in the former municipalities etc the municipality just grew so everyone's part of it I think we have to change that concept, that mindset, and we have to have a more regional vision. Well, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ashi. Mr. Breyer, Gilles Breyer also, please go ahead. Yes, to add to what His Worship Ashi just mentioned, studies were done at the uh, in terms of regional planning and CSR, they looked at sharing formula and various levels here. We're talking about sub regions and regions, you know, obviously, in some larger municipalities, they have major infrastructure that cover a, a larger territory. You know, that was discussed. Does that become a project that's totally regional in scope? I take the Shara region here with the KC Irving Center, which is in Bathurst, but serves with Titan serves the whole region and even the Acadian Peninsula. So funding, should it, should it be an issue at that level? When it comes to a regional issue, you have an arena in Beresford that covers a sub-region, a smaller one, Petit Rocher has an arena again, covering a sub-region. So as Mr. Ashi mentioned earlier, there is this sub-region character, but if there was a municipality that was controlling a bigger territory, that municipality would have to put in place a payment structure for all members. We couldn't arrive uh, in a situation whereby, because you come from LSD, and you're next to a municipality, then what do you call it? You have some benefits where your taxes don't go up necessarily. It would bring about a situation where there wouldn't be no additional funds to operate those facilities. So of course, there'll be some issues at that level that has to be resolved but through dialogue, I agree. Win-win, there's always a way to find a solution. I think people who did these studies 
People have shown that, yes, if they're ready to cooperate, cooperate and pay fairly for services. All right, thank you, Mr. Breyer. I wonder, just before we move to Jacques Guilherme again, Philomène, who made a comment earlier this evening, I think you want to make another comment, Philomène, is that right? Yes, go ahead, Philomène. We can't hear you though. We can't hear you, Fidemen. Okay, now it works. All right, go ahead. On this point, I also want to mention that economic issues and demographic or population issues is that we have to welcome immigrants. Most programs that we develop for immigrants, it's assistance, it's help to immigrants. But there is no program asking immigrants to come to the table to see what do you want? Yes, we have shared values, but, and we have common interests. We want to live here. We want to participate in the decisions, but decisions when you don't know what we need, well, you can develop programs, but they won't meet immigrants' needs, so immigrants won't stay. Right, all right, that's a good point. Dialogue is always important. Absolutely, thank you for the minute. And above this, we don't have the same communication channels. You'll see at the end of these consultations, you won't see immigrants participate and give their viewpoint because we don't have the same communication channels. So we have to find a way to reach out to people where they are to be able to participate. Absolutely. Thank you for your comments. Thank you for being here. Femen. So now, Jean Guilherme, please, Mr. Levesque. Yes, hello again. I'd like to go back on this notion of win-win through dialogue. And honestly, I want to say specifically one thing. I believe we have to have to move into a mode where we want to contribute to regional development when it comes to the implementation, but also the vision, the visioning exercise, the way we perceive things. And of course, you know, when we're talking about development, we could look at contributions, etc. because I'm convinced that one issue right now, one of the most important ones, government must statute, must rule. And I like the idea of having some flexibility at a regional level. Will we impose, I'll say it like this, financial contribution for cooperation. And when I talk about win-win, you know, I'll give you an example right now in Restigouche, in our region anyways, of course, we have Campbellton, a city with some services. Bathurst, KC Irving, Campbellton, and Campbellton, it's another center. In theory, I have no problem that we all sit around the table and we talk to find a formula to help but when our region, I'm talking about our municipality, one has a project in mind. I'm thinking in our region, we have a lot of potential for tourism with our tourism center to welcome ATVs, four wheelers. These infrastructures aren't there, but when we start talking about this, seeing as we contribute to develop a municipality, then I would hope that we'll be able to be able to help also the neighboring community. And I close in saying that I fully agree with uh, the, His Worship Flamek. We have to redefine our vision as to what is a community, what is a municipality, because in fact, you know, we're in 2021, you know, soon we'll be in 2022. We can't see things as we saw them in the past. So once again, we contribute to regional development right now, yes. When we, when we talk about infrastructure that must be developed, I would hope that we'd have a win-win approach to develop also neighboring municipalities. All right, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Akhidevic. Now, we have about eight minutes and we have four people, Mario, Adria, Mariev, and Jules. And after Jules, we'll move to the last question of the evening. So we'll start with Mario, followed by Adria, Mariev, and Jules. Mario. Thank you, Mr. Abishaw. 
The question is interesting for us uh, to increase regional cooperation. I think regional service commissions, I don't think they all work province wide. That's clear in my mind. They, all, they don't all function the same way in the province. For me, the um, CSR, it, it's something, it's not always clear within some cities, villages, and uh, LSDs. I think it really goes through regional service commissions. We don't have the tools, we don't have human resources. You know, how can we improve further our CSR? That's part of the reform. Will we grow? terms of regional services but as for me the question is clear for me i think when we talk about recreational infrastructure and communication win-win formula could the commission play a role i think so but i'm not sure as i said earlier that people see the csr as an essential tool when it comes to regional development. So we have a lot of work to do, especially when it comes to strategic planning with uh, an action plan. I'm not sure that we can measure our actions compared to results at the end of the year. So there's work to be done, you know, with the uh, regional service commissions. And I think, I think it would be useful for recreational infrastructure. I think there's room for improvement. All right, thank you, thank you, Mario. Now, Adrien Prado, please, Adriana. Yes, hello. I want to support Philemon's uh, comments to be inclusive in in the service and consultation offers. I think newcomers. Well, when we try to attract them to the region in the province, we compete with the rest of Canada, with other countries even, and really we have to offer services that are adapted to those newcomers. They don't have the same needs that those who've been here for generations. They don't have the same support network. They don't have the same financial capacities when they arrive here. And they have uh, different objectives and different wants. So for some who live in LSDs, transportation is a problem. You have a car, newcomers, you know, it's not always the case. We have a lot of regions with long distances to travel, to have access to a grocery store, to markets for newcomers. That could be a challenge, just making it there, getting there. So I think more adapted, better adapted program will allow us to keep those newcomers that come here, not just to welcome them and then they leave a few years later. Really, we have to offer them a future that's uh, sustainable, something that really meet the, their needs and their wishes for their future. All right, thank you, Adrien, for your comments. Now, marie and then Jules, and after that, we'll move on to the last question of our evening. marie please. Yeah, thank you very much. I appreciate this opportunity. I think we're having good discussions, good comments. I'm a director for Northwest. Uh, regional service committee i think uh, regional service committees play a role and they have more room more a bigger role to play each regional service commission is different we have different mandates that we're not compelled and they were not uh, it's done regionally based on our regions and if i take the example with covid you know executive directors meet and it's still the case we meet every two weeks we have meetings so we represent municipalities lsds and we represent the province by being 12, 12 people, 12 directors and administrators, and we share information. And it's a good cooperation. And I think it's an engine that could bring about much more on certain issues. And if we look in terms of uh, qualified workers or workers in general, there's some resources that are less and not always available. We all agree on this. So cooperation and regionalization seems to be a key point. And we have to share those services. We have to share human resources, share the costs, it's most important. And I think through regional service commissions, we have some, we have a chance and we're ready to do this. Give us the resources 
and the funding, also adequate funding to develop. Uh, so that's what I want to bring tonight. Jules Bossé now, Jules. All right, yes, we were talking about uh, cooperation at length, but you know, we talk about services also, and services come after. After you need a good economy, solid economy, and that field cooperation also is important. If I take in the 50s and 60s in Canada and New Brunswick, there's a lot of immigrants coming in, people coming to work in agriculture, at that time, there wasn't too many regulations. They brought their knowledge. They contributed greatly to our, our cultural model in Canada. And we're talking about self-sufficient at the same time. We don't give help to the rural area and forestry or agricultural sectors. However, when we're talking about self-sufficiency, we're really to have programs to plant inside municipalities, but we have some farms often are close to bankruptcy. So we have to invest more, well, a bit more. For decades, we didn't invest within LSDs because we we're wondering what was the point? No farm, no food, right? And during this pandemic, and look, you saw this in the States, there's not enough gas. So our, will we always get our fruit and vegetables from California? That's the question. So cooperation is even goes beyond services. It also deals with the economy. All right, thank you once again, Mr. Bussi. Thank you all for your comments. Now let's move on to our next question. Question number four. Some areas of our province are dealing with challenges like urban sprawl and rural subdivisions just outside of the municipal boundary. Other areas are juggling issues like industrial development and protecting natural resources and farms. It is clear that improving coordination between land use plans and future development has a crucial role to play in everything from transportation issues and even recreational facility choices, as well as environmental impacts. Our last question tonight is the following. In what practical ways could we improve coordination between land use plans and future development to address these issues? So now the floor is yours. You can comment on this last question. Would someone like to start our discussions? Oui, Adrien, merci. Adrien, yes, thank you. Go ahead. I think we go back to the idea of cooperation. Uh, so work in the Northwestern Regional Service Commission, we've had various programs with educational institutions like uh, community college uh, studies and ecosystemic studies offered by various groups. Maybe water retention, water quality, the habitat, etc. And the value that these various infrastructures bring to us. Our goal at the RSC is to take this information, put this in our land use plans, so that we take into consideration the impacts, climate change, or land use. Uh, planning within these long-term plans. So really, it's through cooperation with uh, the people who are working on the ground, working in academia and various organizations that eventually will be able to have something that makes more sense when it comes to land use planning. For now, Catherine could correct me if I'm wrong, but regional plans, are no longer compulsory in Brunswick. So when we consider various communities, it's difficult to integrate really the idea of watersheds that go beyond borders, that transcend borders and 
bring ecosystemic services to various communities but are found in serious in several lsds or communities or even are shared between provinces so we have to work at this at various levels with the provincial government and various municipalities nonprofit groups academic institutions must be involved and etc and really we need support on this and we need support to do so all right thank you adrien are there any further comments mr frenet andre frenet you raised your hand andre go ahead andre. yes thank you and i think like adrien could you turn on your camera please yes there we go thank you just to add what was just said i think it's important to define our resources in a promise we have to identify urban centers but we also have to protect resources when we talk about urban sprawl sometimes we lose good farmland or watersheds etc in the past as an urban planner, I had to do some rezoning where there was conflict of usage or in usage rather. We have some people who are outside the limit of municipality, but very close to, sorry, a query. Yeah, close to a query. So, of course, residents were against enlarging that query. But on the other hand, these are natural resources we need for our economy. So the problem wasn't necessarily where the quarry was because it's rather the settlement pattern. It's the settlement pattern, right? That's where we have to protect our resources and not allow any type of development near our resources. They are cities and of course, after that, we have natural resources that are important to, to protect and farmland, et cetera, et cetera. All right, well, thank you. Thank you for those comments, Mr. Frenet. So Catherine Dufour, and then followed by Minister Daniel. Alors, Catherine, the floor is yours. Well, good evening. Thank you once again. I wanted to add to the last two comments. In fact, in our regional plans, I was talking about a provincial scope at one point that should work with regional plants. As you know, there's various challenges for the province. We talked about the economy at length, and I'm pleased that we can talk about the environment too. All the resources, natural resources that we have on our territory. But again, when we talk about uh, land use, planning, all this is intertwined. If we want planning that's sustainable and profitable for New Brunswick when it comes to developing laws to protect our water we have to work on agriculture we have to manage our forest so you know there are many but many issues in this planning to have regional service commissions regional models they see potential and issues and they're aware so i think they're able to make some planning that's adequate by finding what you know groups to support them the province or academic institution at the end of the day the point is to do land use planning that's for future generations uh, that's sustainable but also will take care of our resources of our infrastructure so it's planning is very broad as a field to sit at the table we have to cooperate we have to understand our territory and find partners that are well around us you know so that doesn't happen overnight we need goals and we have to have targets to reach at the end of the day in the future so that we have economic development that's healthy and resources that are healthy and food auto autonomy and we protect what we have to protect so planning goes through regional service commissions and if we want professionals and people who will be trained to do so again in consultation with the people in the environment you know regional service commission is not just all every municipality can have these services so the possibility of having a regional service committee when we come together to have some planning that's sustainable and 
that won't be short-term planning. I don't know. You call it so. You know, to be part of the regional service committee commission is to be part of is to have services that are fair, whether you come from a small, medium, or large community. At this point, and everyone, we have uh, the same vision, and for the wellness of our community it comes first. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Catherine Dufour, for those comments. Thank you, Catherine Dufour, for these nice observations. We'll now move to Minister Daniel Alain. Go ahead, Mr. Minister. Thank you, Mr. Robichaud. What surprises me in all our consultations as well is with our four pillars, the pillar for management is something that is not well known and people, it seems that it's complicated, complex. I believe it's like as an urban planner, people like other friend had the opportunity to work with him for four and a half years with the consulate, something that is really important. And like Catherine mentioned a while ago, it's putting our values valuable. Let's make a declaration, the statement that the farm, forestry, fisheries are important for us. And it evolved so much with planning, even over the past 10 years with, I believe, the internet and what I've seen in the Northwest, the RCs in the Northwest. It evolved so much that we can really make a strong statement in a very close future. And there's also a common practice, urban practice, that they're in rural areas now. Like we want to keep the rural, rural, but urban practices that are in rural areas that should not happen. So it was uh, hurtful for some development. I, I want to pull the discussion, the importance of planning. And we have more than 75% of the territory where there are no plans, no land management plans. I just wanted to raise that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Minister. So we now go to Geta Thomas. Geta. Well, for me, it's a, an issue that I've seen in my former position, how regions were organized and some regions were not organized. And I don't want to insult anyone and very softly, but when we go to Moncton or Dieppe, they have urban planners, they have a plan, a 10 year plan. But when they do development, so when a company comes to get installed in Moncton or Dieppe, they know where to cite them, they have plans already. But they already were in contact, for example, with telephone companies, with electric companies, to make sure that the infrastructures are there. When we had the Oxford plan in the Acadian Peninsula, it happened, everybody tried to get money and it's a large project, etc. But nobody consulted to find out if we had the capacities, whether ele electricity or telephones. And for me, that is what is lacking in some regions is that they're running after projects. And when they have the projects, they realize that they do not necessarily have the necessary infrastructure to support them. And that tells me that there is no communication from the beginning and whether telephone, internet, or NB power at the time. And the point is that in order to make sure that there is development, we'll have to have groups, and I believe that cooperation could be through the RSCs, but that there could be a group of regional planners for all the regions, because the regions that work very well, the Edmonton area is working very well. But when you go out, even to have two megawatts, people thinking you can do it everywhere. And the issue is that sometimes that pushes companies to go in urban centers because they have better planning according to uh, compared to rural rear areas. So there, there are opportunities there to have services like we see in Dieppe and Edmonton, for example, or Moncton. Thank you, Gita. We appreciate those comments. Mr. Serge La Rochelle, please. Serge, go right ahead. Yes, thank you once again for this opportunity. Maybe just to add to the what the minister presented it as to the importance of planning. So in Kokang, by becoming a rural community, that was done over the past few years, one of the requirements was to elaborate a an urban plan, urban plan which is a first interesting exercise, but to communicate to volunteers in the community that uh, wanted to uh, contribute to this plan. 
So when we talk about uh, planning, one of the important parts is that, yes, to have regional services that have the capacity to do it, but we must not forget that interpretation and the framework of smaller communities or small locals be done. So whether it's through funding, through training and coaching, I believe that's important. And to rethink about the tools that we have to do the planning. So for us, the rural plan looked like a, almost like an urban, uh, urban, uh, like an urban zoning plan and parts of Kokang at work, many the areas that are more populated. But when we were get, getting to forestry or well, the forest, we we're talking to trying to plan mature forests and ecologically mature, yes. So that becomes more difficult in a small rural community. Same thing for agriculture. So we can zone for with an activity that's being done undertaken now, but a bit too broadly, like conservation. So if we could define that activity and of course to plan for the future, then we need to, so where are the places to be developed? So that's it, a tool that would renew, take into account new technologies that will allow us to be very specific on the land. And of course, consultation with the population, our vision for the community and for the region. Thank you. Thank you, Serge. I saw Adrien's hand. Adrien, did you want to comment on that? No? No. It was to support the Serge's point. You raised a good point. Thank you. So we'll now move to Norma Terio. Norma? Yes, good evening. We talk about co cooperation, I agree. It's very necessary. We also talk about talking with our neighbors. However, when a municipality wants to talk with the LSD, and the DLS, DS, LSD is not organized, they don't have the tools. Because if I look at the LSD for Saint Anne de Marwaska, there's no committee at all. So if we want to work with these people, we have to regroup them all at the same time. They have no committee. So what can we do? It is a problem that should have undertaken that was not resolved for years. So today we want to work with our neighbors, with everybody and other municipalities. So what do we do with our LSDs that are not organized? So do I have to speak to the minister? Who, in other words, is the person responsible for LSDs? Good question. Good question. Any other comments? No? No, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Adrian? Above and beyond for the RST I'm on the St. Joseph Committee. And even if we do have a advisory committee, we know that the process is not quite democratic for elections. Some receive convocation, some receive, don't receive any, some can be connected. Connected with this year was special, but very often people don't even know what the advisory committee is. So I believe there's a misknowledge of that role and it causes uh, lacks in government, governance, should I say. And we were lucky this year, we have 50 people who ran, but it represents around 3% of the LSD. So it is problematic. And the fact that it is not uh, framed with election New Brunswick, it's not formalized. It doesn't make it a legitimate, it does make for a legitimate process. And even if, even if we like to be able to represent the population, but it's difficult to say that we really have the mandate to do so. When it is uh, so few people that are behind us in the first year that I would set on committee, was by acclamation, so there's work to be done at that level. And even if it was formalized, there might not be as much interest, but it'd be work on education as well of the people in the LSDs as for local governance. I believe it would be important. Perfect. Well, thank you, Adrian. Norma Terio, that you raised your hand or do you want to offer a comment, Norma Terio? No, I didn't raise my hand. Okay, sorry. Je vais passer 
step by step graded to continue in the same vein of thought that Adria. So as for elections, uh, Mr. Minister admitted that in 33% of the population of New Brunswick, there was no democratic system. Some summarize a bit uh, what he said, but there's improvement to be made there. So I believe if municipalities had the same election system as LSDs, it would be quite chaotic because we were consulted five days ahead of time with a flyer in the, and people didn't even see the, the flyer. Some people never received it. So, okay, that is one thing. But being at the table with uh, our RSCs, sometimes there are projects that should possibly have been possible. I mentioned it a while ago that with uh, outdoor activities, there's all the well facilities, but with no budget. So that's uh, lacking in regional cooperation. If there were projects that could be regional, that could uh, attract municipalities or LSDs, then well, we voted for a certain amount that would be taken off our taxes. And when we assessed a project that did not bring anything for LSDs, we wanted to ensure the project. It was the 12, <laughs> 12 works of aesthetics, uh, Hercules, 12 works of uh, Hercules. But after that, when we said simply, we're going to wait to have a system where we manage our budgets ourselves. And now the cooperation would be possible. But effectively, if you have a project with LSDs, it is good to try to contact the, LS, the environmental LSDs. And at the present time, Mr. Minister is our mayor. So it's quite complex uh, in co cooperation. So thank you, Mr. Boisset. We now go to Ryan Donnie. Ryan, thank you, Marisa. I'd simply like to mention points of the three the people who just spoke. We are very aware when there's a democratic deficit in LSDs to think that we could uh, do something with the same type that municipalities through elections in New Brunswick with 236 LSDs, it complicates the issue. It is, of course, we have to find a new system, a system that we lose use this time around. We see that there are more people than we've seen previously. So uh, that is good news, but I believe, like Monsieur Bradeau mentioned, there were 50 people in his LSD. So we had up to 14 candidates for five seats in another LSD. So there is interest. We also have new LSDs that have never had the committees and that raised their hands. So we're going to hold votes in those LSDs. So for Norma, if your LSD is interested, if you can show a bit of interest, on a part of your population, we can get organized for a vote as well in your LSD. So of course, that is something that you can contact your regional office or myself, and we can talk about it. So of course, we're of the same opinion that there is a democratic deficit and we have to dem democratize the LSDs. And that is why it's in the green paper as it is. Thank you. Well, thank you, Ryan. Any other comments? Other people who are already made comments or others who have not made comments yet? We still have a few minutes. If uh, you have anything to say, Mr. Clavet, go ahead, Gerald. Uh, the interviewer regrets, but the sound is so bad that I cannot translate. Gerald? Yes, Gerald. We have problems hearing you. There's an echo. Okay, is it de nouveau? Try again. No. No, no that's a bit better, but it's really hard to interpret. About democratic process. Regularity, I just simply like to say that altogether, citizens in the LSDs, if we look at the level of health, and education 
and they are very democratic like the rest of the province and fairly often they're going to elect the same representatives and that more than 50 percent of their budget the only place and if you look at the provincial level it's same thing rural ridings and lsds at these ridings that's semi-urban or urban and together the same thing at the federal so if we see the entire budget under which they're for which they are responsible and they have no water and service or water and sewer services so the lsds have to deal with issues that concern them but it does not have the size or amplitude of municipalities so the question of democratic deficit is an invention that was perpetuated yes it exists but not at the same degree as, like people would like to make us uh, believe okay secondly another point i'd like to raise is with the sprawl urban sprawl we're talking about how to counter urban sprawl and urban sprawl goes in certain regions in the south of the province and the minister mentioned it in his uh, green paper that over the past next, next 20 years, the only Moncton region, Fredericton, and up to a certain point, St. John, the people, the population is going to increase. Well, that's nothing new. It's been that way for 50 years and people in uh, our regions in the north are emptying themselves in favor of the southern pop, uh, province. So urban sprawl, we have some in our region, but not of the size and amplitude that they could be in the region of Moncton, for example. So you have to be careful when we want to apply regulations or municipal bylaws and to establish more or less that are going to encompass the entire province. I believe that each of the regions has their own challenges. And the greater challenge in your project now, I believe that many mentioned it, is immigration. If you want to talk about uh, maintaining our infrastructures and if we want to have economic development that's a major challenge so preventing urban sprawl why was there urban sprawl in our regions many people who withdrew from municipalities why it's because in municipalities dead bylaws that, that prevented them from having something that's fairly simple a small chicken coop so people in lsds so there they had prop they could have a chicken coop in in large municipalities now and people are asking to raise a few hens so we have to be careful let's say in our vision for the future as to what people really want because equally previously in municipalities if somebody drove a truck vans we say and they let the motor open for a few hours at night well of course their neighbors uh, are going to complain and then they moved and then went into regions in lsds and the quantity of reasons like that why people went to dsls lsds rather and if we amalgamate all of that and we come we're once again the same things that we have in urban centers we and we want to impose those in lsds well what is it going to give exactly okay thank you Gerald. thank you for those comments we'll now move to filomen filomen please go right ahead we we can't hear you your mic okay okay hello well, okay yes we can hear you now filomen go right ahead i simply like to and to the comments that came that were presented immigration is reinforced in the north part of the province at the same time as, as uh, Moncton Fredericton it's a municipal council and the town opal opened the door for us for more than 30 years that I've been in New Brunswick I went to, I was in Moncton and we feel at home and immigrants uh, Come as well because there are models we're not the problems to try to 
fulfill immigration, we, we also have good areas. Most of the immigrants that have come to New Brunswick, personally myself, I'm not a person, a town person. I'm a girl from a village. I left Moncton to come to come to Bathurst, but but the doors are completely closed. I'm trying to integrate here. I always say, oh well, if you come in here, you know, if we don't know you, if people don't know you, we don't know you. But you want to have immigrants. But if you have that principle that says I don't know you, I don't want to do that. So, finally, what do you want? Do we want to live together or we don't leave, live together? But if you are you going to understand my problems or not? And most I speak differently. Well, you want immigrants to work at Tim Hortons. You want people to work at McDonald's, immigrants. But these immigrants also have needs as well. They have to live in your community. They want to go to the library and they have to find what they need in the library. They have to bring their children to school. They have to find what they need. So if the province, if you want to have immigrants, we're not only to fill demographically, but we also have needs. The reason why we immigrate to Montreal or Toronto is because the infrastructures are there in order to accommodate us. So we simply want to be there. You'll see that if you open the doors, you're letting immigrants come into your social culture. You're going to see that we are going to install here with no problems. I know the name of the province that start with Lamec, Neguac and everywhere up to Lake Baker. These are villages of New Brunswick, but we're in there. But but things are so closed socially. It's municipal council. In municipal council, you can do everything in order to be able to integrate us in society. That is my personal example that I shared with you. We thank you very much, Filamen, uh, for having shared your experience with us and your comments. Filamen, thank you to you and to all who participated this evening, sadly enough. That's all the time we have for tonight's discussion, but I'd simply like to thank everyone for having participated and participated in such a constructive way to this uh, information um, session yeah. this evening we had many excellent suggestions and once again i really appreciate it before concluding i'd like to re-invite the minister daniel Allen for a closing remarks mr minister thank you very much mr Bichot. i'd simply like to thank everyone for their participation this evening and really interesting discussions and thank you very much it was really interesting and it is something that we are going to continue doing tomorrow. And I'm convinced I like the format. So we talked with my team so that we can have such the opportunity to do it again in during the summertime. And I hope in person as well, if we can do it in August or September, it's really important that we follow the necessary steps and that people have access to discuss the objective of reform is a transformation it's modernization we have a structure that has existed for 60 years we've been talking about it for 20 years so like i mentioned previously it's time to do something if we do nothing we're going to lose three things we're going to lose services we're going to lose infrastructures and like mentioned we're going to lose opportunities for economic development so the objective nevertheless is to bring back democracy and before 1967 people in rural areas had the opportunity to decide their quality of life. Sadly enough, we removed the right, voting rights. We want to bring back the voting rights through a legitimate manner. So for me, it's, it is an objective. It's to keep the rural rural and to have good management practices and regional cooperation as well as finances and management with all our municipalities and lsds so i simply like to thank you if you have any comments or questions please do not hesitate you know how to reach ryan and you have access to our website please do not be afraid you can call me here at the office i'd like to talk about policy politics and local governance. So I hope to once again to go in the regions in the next few weeks. And next week I'm going to Bathurst. 
I'm going to have St. John, and after that, once again, Madawaska and Arisigush. So uh, I'll be glad to see you. It's a community project that is not going to solve all problems, what we're going to do this year. There's some people were disappointed. We're not going to reach their, object, their uh, expectations, but we have to work on the file and to get it evolved. And for that, I hope that we'll have the cooperation of everyone. I'd like to sincerely thank the MLAs from the legislature, Mr. Guitar, Mr. Chasson, and Mr. Lepage for having participated. And I've seen many mayors and councillors and new mayors as well, Mr. Pelletier. So I'm anxious to work with you. We met lately, Mr. Levesque, and certainly the employees of municipalities and representatives and citizens of New Brunswick. We have something, Philo, I'm listening to you. Thank you very much with your interventions tonight. And you pushed it somewhere that we certainly have to go look at Multicultural Center and try to find something. So thank you, Philo, for your commitment, community involvement, and your good advice. So for that, so thank you, everyone. It's up to you. Well, that's it. So thank you once again. And we wish all of you an excellent evening. Thank you and see you soon.